The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session of your distance education program with me, Bate Elvis Ebot, your geology teacher. We continue our distance education program today with lesson 25. And lesson 25 is the origin and types of magma. We'll be looking at the origin and types of magma. As usual, we know that before the start of every new lesson, we must correct the assignment of the previous lesson. With that said and done, we now revisit the assignment that was given in the last lesson. And the assignment was give the characteristics of a volcano. In our last class, in our last lesson, we saw the structure of a volcano. We saw certain characteristics that were peculiar to a volcano. And so, we were expected to just go back and pick them and write them out down. Those who bothered had time to go through it, then their answer is supposed to read as follows. The characteristics of a volcano we said for any geomorphological structure to be described as a volcano we must observe the presence of, a, of an ash cloud because that ash cloud has fine particles which constitute the gaseous materials ejected during volcanic eruptions. That for a, a geomorphological structure to be called a volcano, there must be a pathway through which material from within the air is being ejected to the surface, which we call the vent. We must have material that make up, which have been ejected to the surface and make up the flanks of this structure, which we refer to as lava flow. There must be a cup-like depression at the end of the, of the vent, which we describe as the crater. Then, a volcano must have a source from which materials come from, and that source is the Mamati Chama. Finally, a volcano has some associated landforms, which are described as Volcanic landforms. This could be Bartoli, Seas, Facoli, Lopoli, and so on and so forth. So, the characteristics of a volcano are ash clouds, the vent, a lava flow, crater, mamati chamber, and volcanic landforms. When you did that correctly, then this, there was an expected answer you were supposed to put across. 
tem tem amote tem zabike mane tem bia ninya ne njo bia ye after correcting the assignment, we now go to our topic of today. The lesson of today is origin and types of magma. We want to see where this magma that we started singing when we did the lesson 24 about volcanoes comes from. We want to see the different types of magma if there exist. So that is the focus of today's lesson. Like in the other lessons, we always have a plan that guides us as we proceed with our lesson. And that plan is the lesson overview. And the overview has the outcomes, previous knowledge, real life situation, because we study to acquire knowledge to prevent further happenings in our environment. So we'll look at real life situation and clear the myth in people's mind. We test the hypothesis and then we have, because of this lesson, there are activities that we're carrying out and then we make a summary, we have a resume of our lesson so that we take note of the key things of this lesson. Then we test ourselves with application exercise and finally, we take an assignment. In the course of this lesson, we'll be able to account for the origin and the geologic setting of magma. We should, we would, by all course, as one of our objective, bring out clearly where magma comes from and where magma is located geologically. We will also give the composition of this liquid called magma and then the characteristics of the different types of magma. To understand this few points, this lesson today, we will know that we had already defined magma and then we can, to understand the geologic setting of magma, we will look at the we will look at the structure of the egg to see where precisely is this magma coming from. Today we find, we notice that there are different types of rock bodies in the egg. And the surface is somewhat a puzzle to so many who may not seem to comprehend where the materials that form these rocks come from. We find so many rocks, so people ask, where is this guy? Where, where are these rocks? Where have they come from? Maybe it, when God was creating, he just dropped them. But we realize that they are different. So this lesson is going to help us try to explain the origin of the different type of rock bodies on the surface of the earth. How the scientific problem we want to solve is how were the rocks formed and where are they coming from? How were the rocks formed and where are they coming from? Rocks were created by God because God created everything. God said, let them be, let them be. So from creation story, we know that everything on earth was created by God. Just part of the beauty of nature. So as God created it, he said, okay, we cannot just create a whole earth to be water, we cannot create it to be grass, we cannot create it to be trees. So you have to make a mixture of things. So some people consider rocks, the different rock types on the earth surface as part of the beauty of nature. After they say, beauty is a spice of life. And then some people think that the rocks were formed from the consolidation of magma. We will try to locate during this lesson the origin of magma within the earth cross. We will also describe the various types of magma and will align the source of heat for a partial melting of magma. That, that, those are the principal activities 
that the cost of doing this will be carried out. Now, let us begin. Where is magma coming from? Magma forms from the partial melting of the upper mantle at the cross. Partial melting. So during tectonic movement of the Earth's cross, we realize that this frictional movement generates heat that will cause some of the materials of the blocks that are rubbing against each other to melt and because this melting, this melted material has density, it sinks to the soft, to, to the bottom of the head, beneath the head, and accumulate and result to the formation of magma. This partial melting process occurs in two ways. One, through convection of rock upward through the mantle until it melts. And the second way where partial melting takes place is melting rock at a subduction zone. So mass partial melting takes place in two ways. One, convection, true convection, as a movement of the rocks up and down in a continuous movement, continuous motion, the rocks move in continuous motion upward and downward in the mantle until they finally melt. This repeated up movement will lead to the melting of rocks. And the second way that partial melting occurs is by melting of rocks at the subduction zone. Subduction zone, these are zones that are moving towards each other. One, because of the density, goes down, the other one, as it goes down, we say it has subducted. And as it subducts, there is still movement. This movement of these two bodies will result to melting of the underlying surface that are rubbing each other, then causing materials to move down and accumulate, hence resulting to the formation of magma. So that is how magma is formed. From the partial melting of the upper mantle and the cross, and this partial melting takes place in two ways. One, convection current and melting along the subduction zone. So we can now see the internal structure of the earth. This sketch makes you understand one of the ways in which magma is generated. When you look at this, remember we said to understand this lesson, the internal structure of the head is very vital. When we study the internal structure of the head, we see the head is divided into three layers. We have the cross, the cross, we have the mantle, we have the core, which is divided into inner core and which is divided into outer core and inner core. Now, when you look at the system of arrows that are moving in a circular manner up and down continuously in the mantle around the asthenosphere because the asthenosphere is one of, is a portion of the earth where movement is made possible so this upward movement of this material continuously within the mantle is what we refer to as the mantle convection and this mantle convection will lead to the production of Magma. So this diagram explains how mantle convection takes place. Now, for this melt, partial melting, for something to melt, just imagine you have to take a bottle of palm oil in the kitchen, they are finished using the palm oil, and then you have oil stuck on the walls of the bottle. What do you do? You take it beside heat to melt and then you can use. So we ask ourselves, why does the heat that melts these materials that accumulate to form magma come from? So the source of heat that generates magma is one from geothermal gradient. Geothermal gradient is simply 
the increase in temperature with death. That is, as the further you go downward, the temperature increases. The further you go downward, the temperature increases. So, let's say at the surface of the earth we are at zero kilometers, and we move down within the earth to a distance of about 700 kilometers. The heat at the surface can never be the same like that below. So the geothermal gradient increases after every, it increases after every one kilometer by 30 degrees. So if at the surface of the earth, the temperature of the earth is, the geothermal gradient is 30 degrees. We move down to a distance of 700 kilometers. If one kilometer is 30 degrees, several kilometers, you can imagine the enormous heat at that level. So that amount, this geothermal gradient, has been accounted for as a source of heat that will lead to the generation of magma. We use equal to that radioactive decay releases energy, and this energy is sent to air materials, which when they accumulate, we can huge quantities that can cause materials to melt, hence leading to the generation of magma. And then we have another source of heat, original heat from within the earth. The earth itself has processes that are going on, and this process that takes place release small amounts of heat that accumulate to become huge, and hence will cause materials to melt, which will lead to the generation of magma. Finally, there is frictional movement. We talked about movement along subduction zones. This will lead to friction because the two zone two slabs are rubbing against each other, then generating heat. When you rub your two palms, you will feel warm. You will feel that heat is being generated as you are rubbing. So in the same way as the slab of rock bodies of air materials are rubbing each other, they will generate heat which will cause melt of part of the material that is closer to the point of rubbing, hence leading to the generation of magma. So these are the principal areas where we think heat is coming from to cause magma to generate. Geothermal gradient, radioactive decay, original heat from within the air, and frictional movement. Magma Composition depends greatly on the type of rock from which it is formed. So, it is composed of many oxides. And the principal oxide that make up, that make up magma include silicon oxide, aluminum oxide, iron oxide, iron 2 oxide, Magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, sodium oxide, and potassium oxide. There are eight principal oxide that make up magma. So we should not forget that magma is comprised principally of eight oxides. And these oxides are silicon oxide, aluminium oxide. Iron oxide, iron 2 oxide, magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, sodium oxide, and potassium oxide. So, magma that are derived from the crustal material are dominated by oxygen, silicon, aluminium, sodium, and potassium. What do we mean? We know that the Crust of the earth is divided into two the continental crust and the oceanic crust. And during our studies of the continental crust, we say that it is made of silicon and aluminium material. Hence, that's why we are saying that when magma that is generated from, the, from materials in the continental crust will be rich in silicon, aluminium, sodium, and potassium, then it is kind of cyanic in nature, granitic. Remember, and then those derived from mantle might see that higher levels of, have higher levels of iron, magnesium, calcium, and also silicon. That's within the oceanic crust and the mantle. These 
Ones are basaltic in nature, they are heavy, they are dark because iron, magnesium, and calcium are dark minerals, while silicon, aluminum, sodium, and potassium are light minerals. So we should take note that magma formed from continental crust are different from that of oceanic crust or mantle. We already said that the type of magma formed will develop the nature of the material. Hence, there are the following types of magma. The very first type that we have seen based on the properties of magma is what we call the acidic magma or felsic or rhyolitic magma. This particular type of magma is having a very high silica percentage, has a low melting point, has high viscosity and gas pressure. It is found along hot spots in continental crust and continental rifts. These are the principal characteristics of acid magma. They are found at hot spots in continental crust, the tectonic setting or the geologic setting of this type of magma, hot spots, continental crust, and continental rifts. Then they have high viscosity and high gas pressure, they have low melting point, they have, have a very high silica percentage. They are characterized by explosive eruptions and large amount of pyroclastic material. They have a temperature range from 500 to 750 degrees centigrade. Examples of acid magma that will lead to the formation of a rock include, or rocks formed from the consolidation of acid magma include granite, rhyolite, cyanite. Granite, rhyolite, cyanite. So, we can begin to perceive, begin to see that the diversity of rocks on the Earth's surface is dependent upon the magma from which the rock cooled. The next type of magma is what we call the basic magma or mafic, or better still, the basaltic magma. So we will come across a, a textbook or a material as a basic magma, don't get confused. Mafic magma is the same thing, or basaltic magma is the same thing. So these are just synonyms of the same thing. So what are the characteristics of this magma? They, are, they have low viscosity, low silica composition of about 52 to 45, temperature from 1000 to 1000, 1,300 degrees centigrade, and typical rocks formed from the consolidation of basaltic magma include the rock basalt, those what we normally call in the neighborhood black stone that we use in building uh, embankment walls, foundations, and rest very dark. They carve them for decoration also, and then gabbro. So these are examples of rocks that will form from the cooling of basic magma. So we said basic magma have low viscosity, basic magma have low silica composition of about 52 to 45. The temperature is from 1,000, even higher temperatures compared to acid magma from 1,000 to 1,003 degrees centigrade. And rock, typical rocks include basalt and gabbro. We have the third type of magma called anesthetic magma or intermediate magma. They occur at convergent plate boundaries. They are very explosive and effusive. The, range, the temperature range is approximately 900 to 1,100 degrees centigrade. And examples of rocks formed from this kind of magma is trachyte and andesite. So, we come back to see, after the explanation, to see whether there is any reason. Now, one of these lessons has helped us in clarifying 
the down of the different rock that you find on the Earth's surface. So there are three, there are different types of rock bodies in the Earth, and the surface is somewhat a puzzle. So many people find it very difficult to understand where materials for these rocks come from. So how were the rocks formed and where did they come from? So rocks were created by God. God created everything, we cannot doubt, but we want to give a scientific explanation to where the rocks come from. Rocks are part of the beauty of nature. No. We want, well, our interest here was to see whether this lesson can have a scientific justification of the occurrence of rocks within and on the surface of the earth. So the third option says, the rocks were formed from the consolidation of magma. We saw that magma, we saw how magma was generated through the partial melting of material, and that there are three types of magma, and that this magma, when it consolidates, will give different types of rocks. So, take note that we define magma as, we, we, we stated clearly that magma is formed from the partial melting of the upper mantle and the crust. That this partial melting occurs in two ways, through mantle convection and along melt and along melt around the subduction zone. We say the driving force which acts as a heat to generate this magma is of a geothema gradient, radioactive decay, original heat from within the egg material itself that have been released and from frictional movement as well as the subduction, moving along the subduction zone. Those are the principal sources of heat that generate magma. We said magma is composed of oxides, eight types of oxides. And then the type of magma that we form with depends greatly on the type of rock from which it is where, from which it was formed. So the oxides that constitute magma include silicon oxide, aluminium oxide, iron oxide, iron 2 oxide, magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, sodium oxide, and potassium oxide. These are the eight principal elements after geochemical analysis have been done that exist in magma. Magma is derived from the crustal material and are dominated by oxygen, silicon, aluminium, sodium, and potassium. Those derived from mantle have a higher level of iron, magnesium, and calcium. There are three types of magma. A slick magma, which is rich in, has a very high silica percentage, it has a low melting point, high viscosity and gas pressure. It occurs around hot spots in continental crust and continental reefs. We have basic magmas that have low viscosity, low slicker composition of about 52 to 45, temperature range really from 1,000 to 1,300 degrees centigrade. And examples of rocks that, for, that would form from this kind of magmas include basalt and gabbro. And the sitting magma occurs around divergent plate boundaries and is very explosive and or effusive. Temperature between 900 to 1100 degrees centigrade. And examples of rocks in this, formed by this type of magma, is trachyte and andesite. Name the three main types of magma. How is magma formed and leads the source of it for the generation of magma? Those are the three questions for our exercise for this lesson. So assuming we have had 20 seconds to reflect, let's see the answer. One, the three main types of magma include acidic, basaltic, and anesthetic magma. Acidic, we can also call it rheolitic, we can also say felsic. Basaltic, we can also say mafic, or we can also say basic. And then we have anesthetic or intermediate lava. How is magma formed? We said magma is formed. We saw in the course of this that magma is formed 
from the partial melting of the mantle and the cross leads the source of heat for the generation of magma, geothermal gradient, radioactive decay, frictional movement, original heat from within the head are the sources of heat that will lead to the generation of magma. As I may name the principal oxide in magma. We saw that there are eight of them, so don't forget. And then for further reading, we have our standard text, which ordinary level geology for Cameroon schools from, five and four, from four and five sciences by Kenneth Yosimbong. We have fundamentals of geology, we have the geolo Penguin Dictionary of Geology and Ed Science. If you read this, you understand the lesson very well. Thanks for your keen attention. We've come to the end of our lesson 25. Our next lesson will be on the properties of magma. See you in our next lesson. Una tege si ma tege yob, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 